Hey, welcome back to another episode of Addicted to Gear. What a day, what a week. It's been crazy. It's been sort of like the sky is falling for Gibson week. We started off the week uh, with the video that I put out just the other day where I mentioned to you guys that Gibson was being sued for $50 million by a company that they worked with uh, called Tronicle. As you probably know, Tronicle is the company that developed the robo tuner for Gibson. Gibson was basically licensing the technology from Tronicle and had put it on their guitars. When the technology basically wasn't accepted by the buying public, wasn't embraced by them and was basically a flop, Gibson started to stop putting them on their guitars and Tronicle then um, sued Gibson for $15 million for unpaid royalties and breach of contract, etc., etc. Now, just yesterday, Gibson came back towards Tronicle with a countersuit and they claimed that they were going to be suing them for something else. I don't really know all the details, I just know that it's starting to get pretty messy and pretty hairy. Um, and if that wasn't enough, obviously today everybody is aware that Gibson has now officially filed bankruptcy protection. So we all saw this coming from way before, um, you know, even before NAM, there was already rumors that things weren't going very well. When Gibson didn't show up at NAM this year, that just basically confirmed a lot of the fears that people had. Then later on during the year, we learned that Gibson was over $500 million in debt. And, um, you know, basically Gibson is trying to get out of this debt at this point. So what bankruptcy protection chapter 11 means is that they're not selling off inventory. They're not closing down shop. It just basically means that uh, the creditors right now are demanding to be paid and Gibson cannot be paid. They can't get under uh, out from under this massive debt load. So they're basically filing for bankruptcy protection. So it will give them an opportunity to try and sell off some uh, businesses that are not core businesses. Um, that are not profitable to restructure, to basically refocus and to try and come up with deals to creditors that will alleviate some of this massive debt load, possibly get another loan. I, if I'm not mistaken, they're already, I think they've already um, secured two loans from banks. So it'll be pretty unlikely that they're going to secure a third one but I, I'm sure they're going to try and do something. So what does this mean for you and I? Does this mean that we're no longer going to see Gibson guitars at our local shop? Does this mean we have to sell off what we already have? Uh, I wouldn't worry about it, guys. Honestly, uh, there's a lot of companies that file bankruptcy protection uh, that manage to restructure, to refocus, to, as I mentioned, get rid of the... Uh, parts of their business that are not really important to their core and sell them off and uh, after doing so a lot of them will continue to to run uh, normally will continue to eventually become profitable again um, and to me this is a blessing in disguise I mean it it should have come a long time ago before they ended up being 500 million dollars in debt but unfortunately, I think the CEO was trying to hang on and hang on tight. And it's basically gotten to the point where I think right now the creditors are forcing him to uh, eventually step down. He hasn't announced it yet, uh, you know, but I think it's just a matter of time when we will hear that announcement that someone else is taking over the company. And to be honest with you, I think that's the best thing that could have happened right now. Uh, I'm still hoping that they will be able to get their act together and they will be able to refocus on, on making great guitars. Um, and of course, you're still gonna be able to buy the guitars at your local shop. They're not gonna be pulled off the shelf anytime soon. They actually belong to the dealers. I mean, the dealers you know, have paid for the merchandise, so you will still see Gibson guitars being uh, sold. You might see maybe some deals, maybe. Uh, uh, if, if some dealers are panicking, they might give you a little discount. But overall, I'm pretty sure that you won't really notice a big change. So if you're planning on buying a Gibson guitar, you know, a lot of people might hesitate right now. 
um, you know, you, you might want to wait. You might just want to see what happens and let the dust settle a little bit before you make that decision. Um, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you have an order already with Gibson for maybe a custom shop instrument or something like that that hasn't been built yet, you might see some disru disruption or delays in your order. I would worry about that a little bit more. But as far as seeing the brand disappear immediately, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, we might see the core line of models offered by Gibson diminish. They might actually just weed out the less desirable models that are just wasting uh, time and uh, resources. And they might focus specifically on a few models that are the good big sellers. That's what I predict will happen. So, um, you know, eventually, who knows? Maybe Gibsons won't be made entirely in the USA anymore. I know you guys are, you're blocking your ears right now and it's sacrilege. I know, I know it's a, an American brand, but hey, they already have the Epiphone line that's being made overseas. Yes, it's a tier below, but look, you know, you got to do what you got to do to stay, to stay profitable. And if that's what it takes, you know, that might, that just might happen. We, we don't know. Uh, we might start seeing other guitars coming out that are made overseas and, you know, a little bit less expensive, which is not necessarily a bad, a bad thing. Um, so overall, I think that uh, once the, the dust settles in all this uh, and the CEO is out of the picture, um, you know, it, it's definitely a historic time for Gibson. Um, a lot of people are nervous about all of this stuff happening and who knows I mean we we all saw the what happened when Fender was sold to CBS you know we all know that the guitars pre CBS uh, were considered more valuable because they were still being made by Leo Fender and after they got sold to CBS they were considered to be a little bit less desirable because they went into mass production. Uh, they were basically cranking them out. So who knows if that's going to happen with Gibson? I mean, maybe we'll start seeing a little distinction happening there, you know, pre-bankruptcy, post-bankruptcy or restructuring. Who knows? I mean, anything could happen at this point. But overall, guys, you know, it is definitely uh, an interesting time. Uh, a little bit of a sad time, but you know, business is business. And if you can't stay profitable, obviously there's other businesses out there that will take over. So it's important that Gibson does restructure and comes back hopefully stronger than they were before with the right mindset and the right focus. Um, and only time will tell. So guys, that's it for today. I don't want to go on too, too long. I just wanted to put this out there. I wanted to hear your comments and what you guys think about all this hoopla that's been happening. Uh, let me know if you think uh, it, it's a positive thing. You know, I, I honestly do think it's a positive thing, but I could be wrong. Time will tell. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in once again. Uh, in the meantime, stay tuned. Keep rocking. Hit the little bell if you want to be notified of other videos that I post. And uh, there'll be more great stuff coming your way. Thanks for tuning in.